this video, we're going to be looking at how to solve quadratic equations. Now, by quadratic, we mean an equation that has a highest power of 2 in it. So this is an example of a quadratic equation because it has an x squared term in it here, but there are no higher powers. There's no x cubed term or higher. It can have an x term in it and a constant term in it as well. It doesn't have to. We'll look a little bit more about that in a minute. But it is important the highest power is 2. So if you ever have an equation with an x squared term in it, or y squared or whatever variable you're using, and there is no higher power, you should be thinking quadratic, and we are going to talk about how you solve those today. Now this is a quadratic expression, it's not yet an equation. An equation has to have an equal sign in it. So at the moment I'm just going to call this y. So y equals x squared minus 5x minus 6. Now I know a lot of people don't like graphs, but we're just going to think about what this would look like on a graph. Hopefully you have covered this at some point and you've looked at what quadratic graphs look like, what graphs with x squared terms in them look like, and it will look something like this. So all quadratic graphs either look like that or they might be upside down like that, and they could be anywhere on the graph. They might not cross the axes where they have here, they could be anywhere, but they will all have that general shape, that curved shape. Now that comes in important in a minute. But don't worry too much about the graphs. I know a lot of people dislike graphs. We're only going to talk about them briefly before moving on to how to solve the quadratics without using graphs. Now, I already mentioned that a quadratic is something that has the highest power of 2 in it. Now, all six of these equations are examples of quadratic equations. This is the one we had on the last page, and they don't all look like that form. Here, we don't have an x term. In this one, we've got our x squared term on a different side of the equal sign to our other terms. Um, over here, we've got an x squared term on both sides of the equal sign. That doesn't matter. They are all quadratic equations because of that x squared term and because there is no higher power. So for every single one of these equations, we should be thinking quadratic. How do I solve a quadratic? Now, I'm going to talk about how to solve them using factorising to begin with. If you don't know how to factorise a quadratic, it's a good idea to go back and look at my video on that. And then we're going to move on to talking about how to solve quadratics that can't factorise. And we are going to be using something called the quadratic formula to do that. There is a third method of solving quadratics called completing the square. I'm not covering that in this video. That is covered in a separate video. So in this video, we're going to solve by factorising and by using the quadratic formula. And we're going to solve all six of these equations, even though they all look slightly different. We're going to, by the end of this video, be able to solve all six of these equations. So if we look at our first equation again, x squared minus 5x minus 6 equals 0. This is the standard way that you might see a quadratic written. They won't all be written like that, like I've showed you on the previous page, but this is the standard way. This is how we best like them, and it makes it easier to solve quadratics if it's written in this way. So it's written from the highest power of x in descending order and equals 0. This equals 0 becomes important in a minute and I will explain why. So just to explain again, I'm going to go back to graphs but bear with me. If I plot the graph accurately of y equals x squared minus 5x minus 6, you could go through and for some x values find out the corresponding y value, plot all your points, but I've actually used some graphing software. So this here is an accurate plot of y equals x squared minus 5x minus 6. Now this is important because we wanted to find out the values of x that would give us 0. So if we look at where y is 0, which this is the y-axis, where y is 0 is here, the two, there are actually two places where y is 0. There is one place here and another place here. So there are actually two values of x that give us a y value of 0. And if we look at the graph, those two values are x equals minus 1, because that's where y is 0 here, and x equals 6, or plus 6, which is this point here. So if we plug both of these back into the original equation up here and see what happens. So minus 1 squared minus 5 times minus 1 minus 6. Minus 1 squared, remember, is plus 1. Minus 5 times minus 1 is plus 5, and then minus 6. So 1 plus 5 is 6, minus 6 equals 0. So actually, if we plug minus 1 into our original equation up here, we do get that equals 0. What about the 6 then? So we've got 6 
squared minus 5 lots of 6 minus 6. 6 squared is 36. Minus 5 times 6 is minus 30. And then minus 6. So 36 minus 30 is 6. Minus 6 is 0 again. So there are actually two possible values of x that will give us 0 when we plug it into this equation. So there are two solutions to this equation or two answers. The reason for that is because of a squared. If we think, for example, the equation x squared equals 4. If we want to know what x is, that's the square root of 4, which hopefully you all know is 2. But remember, there is actually a second answer, which is minus 2, because a negative number, when squared, gives us a positive answer. So if we square 2, 2 times 2 is 4. If we square minus 2, minus 2 times minus 2 is plus 4. So whenever we have a squared, there are two possible answers. You should always be looking for two answers. If you ever have an equation with a squared in it, so you ever have a quadratic, you should always be looking for two answers. There won't always be two answers, and we'll look at why and when in a minute there aren't two answers, but you should always approach a quadratic equation thinking about the two possible solutions that you will get. So to solve a quadratic, we could draw a graph each time and find the two points that we're looking for, but that can be very time consuming, tedious, and not very accurate, especially if our answers aren't nice whole numbers or nice integers. Also, some people just don't like graphs and won't quite understand that method. I put the graph bit in there to explain why there are two solutions and it will help us in a minute think about why there might not be two solutions in certain circumstances. So let's have a look then how we can do this without bothering with a graph. So the easiest way is to factorise the equation if you can. And remember, if you can't factorise, then have a look at my video on that. But for now, because we've got a single x squared, we know that we need to add to get minus 5 and times to get minus 6. We're going to have x and x, and our two numbers are going to be minus 6 and plus 1, because when we add minus 6 and 1, we get our minus 5, and when we times them, we get our minus 6, and that's going to equal 0. All we've done is factorise the left-hand side of the equation. We haven't changed anything, we haven't put in any values, we've simply factorised, rewritten it in a different way. Now remember I said the zero is important. The zero, you always, to solve a quadratic equation, need a zero on the right-hand side. And we look at why. Here, we've got two brackets multiplied together to give us zero. So if we think about any numbers we can think of that multiply together to give us zero. So we could have three times zero, that gives us zero. Four times zero minus 3 times 0, 0 times 20, 0 times minus 40,000. I could keep on going. There are actually an infinite number of pairs of numbers that multiply to give us 0. But the important thing is, one of them has to be 0. You cannot have any other two numbers that multiply together to get 0. If they're both very small numbers, you will get a very small answer. If one of them is negative, you will just get a negative answer. If both are negative, you will get a positive answer. So the only way you can get zero is if one of the two things that are being multiplied together is zero. So that means that we've got two things multiplied together here, our x minus 6 and our x plus 1. To get an answer of zero when we multiply these two together, either the x minus 6 must be zero, or the x plus 1 must be 0. If one of those brackets is equal to 0, then it will work in the equation. Now, if x minus 6 is 0, add 6 to both sides, that gives us x equals 6. If x plus 1 is 0, take 1 away from both sides, which gives us x equal to minus 1. So remember I said we are looking for two solutions. We actually have two here. Either x is 6 or x equals minus 1. And remember, we have actually already checked these two values. Minus 1 when you plug it in gives 0, and 6 when you plug it in gives 0. So we know that these two answers are correct, and the reason is that one of these two brackets must be 0. Now, I keep mentioning that this 0 is important. So instead of 0, imagine we had had 6 there. That means that we need two numbers that multiply together to give us 6. So the two numbers to multiply to give us 6 could have been 1 and 6, 2 and 3, 
one and a half and four, 0 0.1 and 60. There are actually an infinite number of solutions and all solutions are different. So it doesn't give us any indication of the value of each individual bracket. The only way we know anything about either of the brackets is if the answer to the multiplication is zero because then you know one of them has to be zero. So remember that whenever you are solving a quadratic, you need an equals zero on the right hand side of the equation. So let's have a look at a slightly different example where we don't have an equal zero. So what can we do here? This doesn't fit what we've just been talking about. So we need to make it fit. So remember, we need our quadratic to equal zero. So we need a zero here. So to get zero, we need to take this 2x away. So if we take 2x away from both sides, we get x squared plus 1 minus 2x equals zero. Now, we could continue like this. You just need to remember that your numbers would this time add to give you minus 2 and times to give you 1 because we've written it in a slightly different order. But it is often easier just to rewrite the equation in the normal order in decreasing powers of x. So x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 0. So we need to factorise that into our brackets and the two numbers need to add to give us minus 2 and times to give us 1. So it's going to be minus 1 and minus 1. So now, because of this equals 0, because we made our equation equal to 0, we know that either our x minus 1 is equal to 0 from our first bracket, or from our second bracket, x minus 1 is equal to 0. So from our first bracket, x equals 1, and from our second bracket, x equals 1. Now, you might be saying, hold on a minute, both of those solutions are the same. They are the same. We had to look for both solutions. You might get a scenario where both solutions are the same. And if we go back to our graphs, the graph of x squared minus 2x plus 1 actually looks something like this, where it only just touches the x-axis at this point here. So there aren't two possible values now. There is only one possible value it is a repeated solution, if you like. There are still two solutions, but it is the same solution they are repeated. So we actually only have one unique answer to this solution, which is x equals 1. And if we put it back into our original equation, the left-hand side, x squared plus 1, would be 1 squared plus 1, which is 2. The right-hand side is 2x, so 2 times 1 which is 2. So the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, so we know that our value of x equals 1 is correct. So remember, although I said you are always looking for two solutions, in some case those two solutions will be the same. So let's have a look at our third example, which is slightly different again. This time we already have equal 0, so we don't need to change that, and our equation is in the correct order. The difference here is we don't have an x term. So we could write it as we've got zero lots of x. You don't need to do that, but it might help you with the factorising. So when we factorise this time into our brackets, we know that the two numbers are going to need to add to give zero and multiply to give minus four. So the two numbers must be the same but different signs so that they cancel each other out. So it's going to be plus two and minus two because that multiplies to give us four. So in this case, I either our first bracket x plus two must be zero, or our second bracket x minus 2 must be 0. So our first bracket tells us that x is minus 2, and our second bracket tells us that x equals plus 2 or x equals 2. If there is no constant term, it is often easier just to rearrange the equation into a normal equation. Because you only have one term with an x in it, you can just transpose or rearrange so we add 4 to each side to get x squared equals 4, and then we square root the 4, remembering that because we had an x squared, we are looking for our two answers, and we know that the square root is 2 or minus 2. So it gives us the same answers that we got down here. So if there is no constant term, you can do it by factorising, remembering our difference of two squares, you might have heard that before, or remembering that it is actually 0x, or you could just do it by rearranging.
So before we move on and look at quadratics that don't factorise and how to solve them using the formula, pause the video and have a go at these three questions to check that you understand how to do it by factorising. So for the first question it is already equal to zero so that is fine we can carry on and factorise. So we know that we are going to need two numbers to give us plus six when multiplied but minus seven when added so that's going to be minus six and minus one. So from this we know that x minus six is zero from our first bracket or x minus one is zero from our second bracket. In the case of our first bracket then x would be six we add six to both sides or six minus six is zero and in the case of our second bracket x equals one. So our two answers are 6 and 1, and if you were doing this in an exam, you would go back, plug them in and check. It's an easy way to make sure you're, that you are getting the marks. Number two, we do not have equal 0 on the right-hand side, so we need to do some rearranging first. So to get rid of the minus 8x, I need to add it, so that becomes x squared plus 8x. And to get rid of the 9, I need to take it away, so take away 9 and that would leave me with nothing left on the right hand side, so equals zero. I can then factorise this one. We need two numbers to multiply to give us minus nine and add to give us plus eight. So that's going to be plus nine and minus one. So from our first bracket, x plus nine equals zero, or x is equal to minus nine. From our second bracket, x minus one equals zero, or x is equal to one. So there are, again, our two different answers, x equals minus 9 or x equals 1. So for number 3, again, we do not have equal 0, so we need to do some rearranging. So I'm just going to take that 3 away to leave us with nothing on the right-hand side, but that means that we're going to have to take away 3 from the left-hand side. So now we can factorise. This one is slightly more difficult, and again, you can look at my other video on how to factorise it. But we know that we're going to need 2x and x, and then we're going to need a 3 and a 1, so we need minus 3 to give us minus 6x, plus 1 to give us plus 1x, which when added would give us our minus 6. So from our first bracket, 2x plus 1 is equal to 0, which means that 2x is equal to minus 1, which means that x is equal to minus a half. So you don't always get nice whole integer numbers, that is fine, that is a completely valid answer. From our second bracket, x minus 3 equals 0, so x is equal to 3. So our two answers are minus a half and 3, and again, plug it back into your equation to check that they both work. So now let's see what happens in a question that is slightly different. So it's a quadratic, so the first thing we think is we need equals 0, so we need to get rid of that 7 or take it away, so we end up with x squared minus 4x minus 7 equals 0. Now you can have a go at factorising this, but I can tell you it does not factorise. There are no two whole numbers that multiply to give us minus 7, but add to give us minus 4. So in this case, it does not factorise. Now, that is okay, we can still solve this, and there is a handy formula that someone has worked out for us to tell us how to solve it. Now the formula tells us that if we have a lots of x squared, b lots of x and a constant c and that is all equal to zero when added together you can actually rearrange this equation to rearrange it because we've got two terms with x in it one of which is squared and one of which is just x you need to know the method completing the square so if you look at my video on that it will actually go through where the quadratic formula comes from but all it is is a rearrangement of this to get x on its own so it actually comes out as x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac and the square root of all of that and that is all over 2 lots of a. So remember this is just a rearrangement of the top equation. So in this formula a is just how many x squareds you've got b is just how many x's you've got and c is just the value of the constant on the end. It's nothing fancy or magical but you need to make sure that you understand what a, b and c are. So if we go back to our question number four up here, a is how many x squareds we've got. 
we have 1 x squared. I know there is no number in front of the x squared here, but x squared is the same thing as 1 x squared. How many x's do we have? We actually have minus 4 x's. You need to include the minus sign in your b. We are not adding 4x, we are taking away 4x, we have minus 4x's, and our constant, you might have guessed, is going to be minus 7. So all we do is substitute these three values into the quadratic formula that is given to us. So x is equal to minus b, which is minus 4, then plus or minus the square root of b squared, so minus 4 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is minus 7. Now, when substituting in, you need to be really, really careful with the minus signs, particularly the b, because we have a minus b here, and a minus minus makes a plus, and we have the b squared here, which when you square a negative number, it becomes positive. If you type it in your calculator as minus 4 squared without the bracket, your calculator will calculate that as minus 16, whereas minus 4 all squared means minus 4 times minus 4, which is plus 16. So you need to be really, really careful when substituting in. There is a trick you can do if you have a clever scientific calculator, such as a Casio one, which is actually store your values store your values of 1 minus 4 and minus 7 and then copy that formula using a b and c into your calculator it will deal with the minus sign for you but unfortunately not everyone has that so you need to just make sure you're being careful when substituting it in let's just finish off this formula then that all goes over to a which is 1 so you might be wondering now how we actually solve this because what does this plus minus sign here that just means that it can be plus or minus. Remember, this is a quadratic equation that we are solving, so we are always thinking that we should be looking for two possible answers or two possible values of x, but we only have one equation for x, which is the quadratic formula. But this plus or minus actually tells us, well, you do it once with a plus in it, and you do it once with a minus in it. And that comes from the fact that Going back to our example of the square root of 4, which can be 2 or minus 2. So in our quadratic form down here, the square root, your calculator will give you the positive answer, so the 2. But you need to also do it once with a minus sign to allow for the negative answer, the minus 2. So this does actually give us our two answers. You just do it once with a plus sign and again with a minus sign. So if we go through and do some simplification, minus minus 4 is just plus 4, and then we are going to either add or take away minus 4 squared, which remember is plus 16, minus 4 times 1 is minus 4, times minus 7 is plus 28, and it will be the square root of 16 plus 28, and then that's all over 2 times 1, which is 2. So we get 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 plus 28, which is 44, all over 2. Now, the square root of 44 is actually the square root of 4 times the square root of 11, which would give you the square root of 44 when multiplying. So that is two lots of the square root of 11. So we can simplify this down to 4 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 11 over 2, which is 2 plus or minus the square root of 11. Now, you don't have to go through and simplify this down unless you have been told to leave your answer in this form or third form. You could just type it into your calculator. And if you type it into your calculator, when you do it with the plus, you get x equal to 5.32 to three significant figures. And when you do it with a minus sign, you get x equal to minus 1.32. So they are the two possible values of x that will work in the original equation. So again, type them back in. So your answer squared minus 4 times your answer, and you should get 7 for both those answers. Now, this quadratic formula will always work for any quadratic, even ones that do factorise. So we could have actually used this quadratic formula for all the previous examples that we've done. However, factorising is of often quicker, easier and less prone to error. So if it does factorise easily, 
then I would always use factorising but you could use the quadratic formula if you particularly struggle when factorising. So let's have a look at another example and this time we don't have r equals zero and remember our quadratic formula is the rearrangement of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So you need to start with equals zero to be able to use the quadratic formula. So we need to start by rearranging our equation to get zero. So we could take the 3x squared away and we get 1 minus 4x minus 3x squared equals zero. Now remember, a is how many x squared we got. It is not necessarily the first term. So in this example, we have a is equal to minus 3. So because here we have minus 3 lots of x squared, our b is how many x's we have, which is minus 4, and our c is the constant, which in this case is just 1. Now, if you're not exactly sure why I've done this, think of rearranging this equation to have the x squared term first. We've got minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 is equal to 0. So in this case, because we've got it in the order x squared, then x, then constant, it goes a, b, c. So a is minus 3, even though it was the last term up here. It doesn't matter where it is, it matters what it is with, and our a is always how many x squared we have. Now you could carry on and plug the value a equals minus 3, b equals minus 4, and c equals 1 into the quadratic formula. But some people prefer not to have a negative x squared term. So what we could have done from the beginning up here, so we could have actually moved everything to the right hand side of our equation by adding 4x to get rid of the minus 4x on the left hand side and then taking away 1 to get rid of it from the left hand side which would leave us with 0 on the left hand side. Now remember an equal sign just means the two things on either side of the equal sign are the same. So this is exactly the same as if we had written 3x squared plus 4x minus 1 equals 0. You can switch the two sides of the equation, they're still equal. In this case, we have a equals 3, b is how many x's we have, which is 4, and c is our constant, which is minus 1. You might be wondering how we can have two different sets of values for a, b, and c, but if you plug either set of value in, you will get the same answers out, because if you notice, the signs are just reversed. We've got minus 3, minus 4, and plus 1 up here, and we've got plus 3, plus 4, and minus 1 down here. So both would give you the same answer. I'm going to go ahead and use the first set of values we've got, so use the minus 3, minus 4, and 1. So if we plug these into our quadratic formula, we've got minus b, which is minus 4, plus or minus, so we do it once with a plus and once with a minus, and then b squared, so minus 4 squared, minus 4 times a, which is minus 3, times c, which is 1, and that all goes over 2a which is 2 times minus 3. So we've got minus minus 4 which is 4 plus or minus the square root of minus 4 squared is 16 minus 4 times minus 3 times 1 is plus 12 and that all goes over minus 6. Now remember if you have a scientific calculator you can store your values of a, b and c or type it in just like this you don't need to go through the simplification but I'm just going to quickly simplify it to show you how it works. So we've got 4 plus or minus the square root of 28 over minus 6. 28 is 4 times 7. The square root of 4 is 2. So we've got 4 plus or minus 2 root 7 over minus 6. If you type that into your calculator, once with a plus, you get 0 0.215. And when you type it in the second time with a minus sign instead of the plus sign, you get minus 1.55. And again, you can check your answer by plugging it into the original equation. So our last example that we had right at the very beginning was this one. And this one is slightly different because we've got an x squared on both sides of the equation. That is still okay. It's still a quadratic. We don't have any higher powers. We just need to rearrange it to get zero on one side of the equation. So we take away an x squared from both sides, which leaves us with 1x squared on the left-hand side gets rid of it from the right hand side, we've got our plus x and then we need to add 4 to both sides 
and that gets rid of the x squared and the minus 4 to leave us with 0 on the right hand side. So in this case, a is how many x squared we've got, well we've got 1 x squared, b is how many x's we've got, which again is 1, and c is our constant, which is 4. Just remember at this point that you must rearrange your equation to equal 0 before you can take your coefficients for a, b and c. You cannot take the coefficient straight from the equation, the original equation up here, because you do not have equal 0. So a is not going to be 2, which is a common mistake. You need to rearrange it first, and then this equation tells you your coefficient for a, which is 1. So if we plug these values into our quadratic formula, we get x equals minus b, which is just 1 this time, so minus 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4 times a times c, 4 times 1 times 4 is 16. So we get minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 16, and that all goes over 2a, 2 times 1 is 2. So if we simplify that down, minus 1 plus or minus the square root of minus 15 all over 2. Now if you type this into your calculator, it will say something like maths error or syntax error. And the reason why is this here, the square root of minus 15. Now if you think about what number multiplies by itself to give minus 15, there are no real numbers because a negative number multiplies by itself to give you a positive and a positive number multiplies by itself to give you a positive. So there is no real number that multiplies by itself to give you minus 15. There is no real answer or no real solution to our equation up here. And if we think about why, when we've rearranged it to x squared plus x plus 4, if we plot the graph of y equals x squared plus x plus 4, it actually looks something like this. So at no point on that graph is the y value equal to 0. There are no values of x that will give you a value of 0 as the answer. If you've dealt with imaginary numbers, you can find a solution that way. But for the purpose of GCSE and before you've met imaginary number, we just state that there are no solutions. So like I pointed out earlier, you were always looking for two solutions. We have looked for our two solutions, which is minus 1 plus the square root of minus 15 over 2, or minus 1 minus the square root of minus 15 over 2. But in that, this case, they are not real. You cannot do that, so there are no solutions. So although we are always thinking about our two solutions, and usually there will be two solutions, there is the odd occasion when the solution is repeated, so there is only one unique answer. And sometimes you will get a case where there are no real answers. And if you think about our quadratic formula here, it is this bit that tells you how many solutions there are going to be. Because if b squared minus 4ac is negative or less than 0, this means that the bit inside the square root sign up here is negative, And because you cannot square root a negative number, this one is where you have no solutions. If b squared minus 4ac is exactly equal to 0, then it doesn't matter whether you add 0 on or take 0 away. Neither of those make a difference to the answer. So that is the case where you have one solution. Because whether you add 0 or take 0 away, they will both give you the same answer. So you will have one solution. If b squared minus 4ac is a positive number, so it's greater than 0, when you square root it, you will get an answer, and if you add it, it will give you a different answer to when you take it away. So that is when you get two solutions. So in some cases, most cases, you will have two solutions, but if b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, you will only get one solution, and if b squared minus 4ac is actually less than 0, then you cannot find a real number, you can't find a solution to your equation. So just pause the video and all I want you to do at this point is work out how many solutions there would be to these equations. I don't want you to actually solve them yet. Just think about how many solutions there would be by considering the value of b squared minus 4ac. So in this first equation, a is 1, b is actually 0 because we don't have any x's and c is minus 9. 
So b squared minus 4ac would be 0 minus 4 times 1 times minus 9, which would be 0 minus 4 times minus 9 is plus 36. So 0 plus 36 is 36. This is positive, so there are going to be two solutions. Number two, a is 1 because that's how many x squareds we've got. B is 2, how many x's we've got, and C is 4. So B squared minus 4AC would be 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4. 2 squared is 4, minus 4 times 4 is minus 16, which gives us minus 12. So because that one is negative, you can't square root it, which means that there are no solutions to number 2. Number three, remember we always need equals zero. So we cannot just take our values of a, b and c yet. We need to rearrange first. So we need to take the six x away and add nine on to leave us with nothing. That gives us a is equal to one because we've got one x squared. B is minus six, which is how many x's we've got. And C is nine. So you can see it's important to do the rearranging first, otherwise you would have had b as plus 6 and c as minus 9, and it's important you get the signs the right way around. So b squared minus 4ac then would give us minus 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 9. Minus 6 squared is plus 36. 4 times 1 times 9 is 36, so 36 minus 36 is 0. So this one has only one solution because it doesn't matter whether you add or take away 0, it doesn't make any difference to the answer. Number 4, we need to just rearrange again. 7x squared minus 4x minus 2 equals 0. So A is our 7, B is our minus 4, and C this time is minus 2. So b squared minus 4ac is equal to minus 4 squared minus 4 times 7 times minus 2. That gives us 16 minus 4 times 7 minus 2 is plus 56. So we get 72, which is positive. So therefore, again, we have two solutions. Finally, we've got already got 0 on the right hand side, so a is how many x squareds we've got, which is 3, b is how many x's we've got, which is minus 5, and c is our constant, which in this case is 0. So b squared minus 4ac would give us minus 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times 0, which actually gives us minus 5 squared is plus 25, 4 times 3 times 0 is 0, so 25. So again, this is positive, so there are two solutions. So now you know how many solutions you are looking for, pause the video and have a go at solving these equations. If they factorise, then you can solve it by factorising. If they don't, you have to use the quadratic formula, but if you prefer the quadratic formula, you could use that on all of them. I've left in the blue brackets how many solutions we are looking for. So for this first equation, there is actually no x term. So we could use the quadratic formula with b equal to 0. We could factorise it by doing the difference of two squares. Or, because there is no x term, we can simply rearrange it. So x squared is equal to 9. x is the square root of 9. So x is equal to 3. Or x is equal to minus 3. Whichever root you took, whether you did factorise in quadratic formula or did it this way, you should have ended up with these same two answers. Number two, there were no solutions, so there is no point going through and doing that. We can't get any answers. Number three, you can do by factorising. Remember, you need to do this bit of rearranging first to get x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 0, because you need the equal 0. And you could then factorise that. But I'm actually going to do it using the quadratic formula to show you that it does give you the same answer. So x is equal to minus b, so minus minus 6 plus or minus the square root of minus 6 squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a, which is 2 times 1. So minus minus 6 is plus 6, 
and then we get plus or minus the square root of minus 6 squared is 36, 4 times 9 is 36, so 36 take away 36 is 0, so we actually have the square root of 0, which is 0, and that's all over 2. So 6 plus 0 is 6, 6 minus 0 is 6, so we actually have only one answer, which is 6 over 2, which is 3. And again, if you did the factorising, you should have found your two brackets to be x minus 3 and x minus 3. So both of those brackets give you an answer of x is equal to 3. Number four, we this one actually does not factorise. So this time we are going to use the quadratic formula. So we've already found our values of a, b and c previously. So we plug them into the quadratic formula. So minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared, so minus 4 squared, minus 4 times 7 times minus 2 minus 4ac, and that is all over 2a, so 2 times 7. Now, if you simplify that down and plug it into your calculator, you will get x is equal to 0 0.892. And your second answer will be x is equal to minus 0 0.320. And again, you should always be double checking these answers. So do 7 times your answer squared, minus 4 times your answer, and you should get 2. Number 5, we could again use the quadratic formula, but this time c will be 0. But it's actually easier to factorise. Because there is no constant term, we can just take an x out. And we are left with 3x minus 5, because 3x times x is 3x squared minus 5 times x is minus 5x, and that will be equal to 0, which tells us that either the first thing, x, is equal to 0, or the second thing that is multiplied, 3x minus 5, must be equal to 0. So x equals 0 is one answer. If you plug that into 3x squared minus 5x, you will get 0. The other answer, we need to do a bit of rearranging. So 3x is 5, so x is 5 over 3, which it could be presented as a decimal 1.66666 recurring but I would always leave your answer as a fraction unless told otherwise because it is more accurate. So hopefully you now know how to solve quadratic formulas by factorising or using the quadratic formula. Remember that the quadratic formula is just a rearrangement of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero and it gives you the value for x. So although you type it in with a plus once and with a minus once, you might actually get two positive answers, you might get two negative answers, but they are both answers for x. They are values of x that will work in the equation. You can use the quadratic formula for any equation that has an x squared in it and no higher power and no fractional or negative power, but you need to make sure that a is your number of x squared b is your number of x's and c is your constant and you need to make sure that you are including any minus signs and that you are being very careful when substituting minus signs in. If the equation factorises, it is often easier and less prone to error to factorise the equation first, but whether you are factorising or using the formula, you need to always make sure you have rearranged to get equals zero first. So there is the third way that I mentioned earlier called completing the square. And if you want to have a look at that, then you can have a look at my other video. But the more common ways that are used for solving quadratics are by factorising all the quadratic formula. So good job, and I'll see you again soon.